Hello everybody, it's Josie here. I'm going to be doing a two book review today. So the two books that I'm going to be talking about are connected by the word witch in them. Um, and these two books are actually, they're kind of, I, I'm really more and more finding myself kind of going back to my roots, I guess, to the things I used to love um, a few years ago or years ago when I was younger. Um, the things that I guess I kind of thought, some, some things I kind of thought I couldn't love anymore. Other things, I think I've spent quite a few years kind of trying to figure out who I am, you know, the, the classic who I am, where I want to go, what I want to do. Um, and I've tried to sort of fit into certain molds that actually turns out are not for me. Um, and I'm really starting to kind of get back to who I am again, which is really amazing. Um, and therefore, reading these two books has just kind of come at a good time for that. So the two books that I'm going to talk about, uh, this one over here. So this is The Season of the Witch by Natasha, Natasha Mostert. And then this one over here is The Naked Witch by Fiona Horn. Um, so these two books, uh, th th where they link back is, first of all, um, they are about witches. This one is fictional, while this one is actually an autobiography. So it's Fiona Horn's autobiography. And I became interested in uh, Wicca and witchcraft and paganism when I was young sort of my late teens um, and it's something that I've always loved and kind of um, practiced on and off and, and kind of gone back to within my life so um, first of all that's just something that I love um, and Fiona Horn actually um, I Fiona Horn's book um, or she's written a couple of books but one of her books um, in particular um, it was called Witch a Magical Journey is one of the the first kind of books that I read, like non-fiction witch books that I kind of got into, um, and particularly from more modern um, practitioners, and I really loved Fiona, and I've loved Fiona for years, and I've always wanted to read this autobiography ever since I knew that it existed. Um, Fiona wrote it um, not sort of at the height, I guess, of her fame, um, as a, what she calls in her book as a like, celebrity witch. Um, and this was written years after, but once I became aware of this book, I, I've been wanting to read it. It's kind of been sitting on my list of things. And eventually I actually found this, this is um, on Amazon Marketplace, this is a secondhand copy and I managed to get a hold of this. And I couldn't have been happier that I finally read it because this actually follows Fiona through to her, obviously from, from her childhood. And um, at the end of the book, she's 50 and she's like 50 and fabulous. Um, and she's had an extraordinary life, um, at times heartbreaking. Um, trigger warning in here um, in the early part of the book for for sexual abuse um, but she's had the most fascinating interesting kind of all over the place existence um, and I find her an incredibly fascinating and interesting person to read about um, and I loved this book um, I, I just really find it fascinating I love the the way it's structured I love the way it looks so each chapter looks like that so it kind of echoes this kind of fire on the cover um, Fiona got into fire dancing later on in life, which is really very cool. And then there's also some great, you'll see some great pictures um, in there throughout the book. I kind of almost wish I had a hardcover copy. So that's Fiona in her kind of her witch fame heyday, as she calls it. And she was, uh, she is Australian. Um, she was born in Australia. Um, she's lived all over the world. Um, like I said, she was, she was a rock star. Very cool with Def FX. Um, she was also, uh, you know, writer, wrote uh, books on, on witchcraft, went on TV. I starred in a very kind of cool uh, reality show in America called Mad Mad House. Um, and she's just done some incredible, wonderful things. Now she's a pilot. It's just an incredible um, read and I loved it and I loved reading about Fiona's journey um, and about her as a person and just kind of also seeing the behind the scenes things of um, you know that kind of fame as a celebrity witch um, and kind of knowing what was going on behind the scenes and I think it's also always interesting with people that are famous um, and you know you see one side of them and that the public sees them as one thing but also what is going on in that internal world and I I really found that fascinating um, and again uh, I kind of really connect with Fiona in the sense that she spent a long time a huge part of her life just trying to just mold herself into what people wanted and to fit into certain situations with certain people um, and not necessarily 
always knowing or being true to herself um, and her core. And I, yeah, I, that really resonates on a personal level with me. So loved this book um, and loved finally reading it and kind of getting back. I'm, I've picked, I've got which her other book, which I'm trying to find desperately right now and I can't see it on my shelves, but um, uh, her other book. Um, and it is just, um, I love it. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm going back into that. And then the second book is this one over here. This is um, The Season of the Witch by Natasha Mostert. Um, Natasha is a South African author. Um, I was raised in South Africa and she, uh, I've actually read, read two of her novels. So I've read this book before. So this is a reread, except I read it years and years ago. And I do remember um, when I first read it, I was captivated by it. I loved it. It was one of those books that I read and really kind of got into. I think I probably picked it up because of the title at the time, Season of the Witch, which is just a cool title and a cool cover with the raven on the front um, and the kind of mysterious looking lady. Um, and this is also cool at the back, you've got kind of the runes on the back. Um, and But I didn't realise how much I was actually going to love um, the book, it's so well written. So Gabriel is the main character in the book and he is a kind of a thief of information. So he uh, and his partner have a company. Um, they live in London. Um, he, you know, they do kind of almost like corporate espionage mainly. That's kind of their main deal. They like hack into corporate systems and, and gather information for competitors and things like that. That's what they mainly do. Um, and then Gabriel gets contacted by his ex kind of college girlfriend who's married to a very rich man who has a grown son and the son has gone missing. And her husband, you know, he's desperate to figure out what's happened to his son. Um, and Gabriel's ex-girlfriend contacts him and says, Gabriel, I know you've, you've got this gift. And it turns out the gift that Gabriel and he kind of his girlfriend share, but he has it to a much more extent, is um, this gift of remote vision. So it's a bit like, uh, like psychic vision. Um, and uh, at the time they went to kind of a specialised school to develop the skill to kind of remote view someone else's thoughts um, and they used this a lot in dealing with um, the police and in, in cases it turns out um, and there's a bit of a backstory there which I obviously won't give away um, but he has this and she, she's sort of saying to him I want you to try and figure out what happened to my husband's son because we think something bad's happened to him he's just disappeared we, we don't know you know can you help us um, and this is where he meets these two incredible women um, and they are sisters and they he he starts to sort of investigate them because they're the kind of link to the missing boy um, and things kind of just roller coaster and escalate from there so the season of the witch refers to the two sisters uh, the monk sisters and they live in this incredible house in London and they are essentially I they are witches they ish um they they practice certain things um it is they are captivating uh, i adore them um uh i'm in love with morrigan monk uh and then manalouche is, is the other sister they're just very cool very exotic i love the way this is written i love the descriptions i love the kind of um the juxtaposition between like a thriller like what is going on and what's happening and what has happened to this boy but also these two kind of oh just wonderful sisters and the way they described and the setting and like him falling into their world um it's just great i love this book i've written, I've read another book of natasha most it's called the keeper again years ago and that one actually i want to reread as well it's about um kind of martial arts which I love um, and uh, so that one was really good but I this was my favorite at the time and it's one of those things where because I read it years ago I was like am I still gonna connect with this as much am I still gonna love it and I just freaking love this book and I love the idea of um, remote viewing and also there's a thing about memory palaces in here and I won't give too much away but just in terms of uh, memory and how you organize memories and it's very interesting um, so I love, 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 love this book. Highly recommend it. I've never really heard anyone talk about it. And then again, highly recommend Fiona Horn because I adore Fiona Horn. Um, and anyway, that, so, so those are the two books. I think moving forward, just, just as a quick kind of an aside note on the channel, you're probably going to see more of these type of books as well. Um, like I said, I'm kind of slowly starting to go back to what I really love, um, you know, in terms of my literature, my music, um, the, the things I'm interested in, the people I'm watching, my style, all of those things. Um, and I'm, it's making me incredibly happy. 
Um, so you'll probably see more of these types of books if you like that, um, and obviously still loads of the queer content. Um, these two books don't really have uh, queer content in them, which I think is there. Oh, actually, um, Gabriel's partner in the um, in the agency that he has, he is um, he is queer, um, and um, there's reference to to husband in there. So um, it, there is actually a, a queer character, but it's not something that forms a major part of the the story as such um and Fiona actually she um as it turns out had a relationship uh with a woman for a very long time that no one knew anything about as well so uh I guess essentially she she doesn't uh, define herself but she did have a relationship with both men and women um so that's I guess kind of the the, the queer content in those books but that's not really the reason I was reading those books um you know the, the there's the other interests um, around the the witch and the wicker and um, just a little bit spooky. Um, I think I said in my last video, which was the wrap up for the queer um, let readathon, that um, I'm really kind of into thrillers and the kind of the darker, spookier, more psychological side of things at the moment. And I've literally just before I filmed this video, I went down and got the post, and uh, two two books have arrived um, that I again bought. I, I buy a lot of my books secondhand. Um, First of all, because you, a lot of them, you can't get them new anymore. Um, particularly a lot of like the American authors that I like or the stuff sort of from the 90s, the slightly more obscure press stuff, um, the slightly more obscure authors. But second of all, it's cost effective and it's great for recycling. Um, but yeah, two books just came that I'm really excited about and I'm waiting on a third one. Um, and I might sort of do a, I might do a TBR. I haven't done the TBR in ages because I don't really like doing them if I'm totally honest. Um, but, you know, I might just talk about kind of moving forward and a lot of those those are probably going to be a lot of the books that you'll see but I yeah I'm really enjoying reading them at the moment so yeah um and then maybe just talk more about films and music and, and things like that and interests so um yeah let me know actually like I said I've never really heard anyone talking about Season of the Witch before so let me know if you've read it or if you've read um any of M Natasha Mostert's books she's got some other books which um I haven't read yet which I want to um and if you think of anything similar that you think I might like let me know down um in the comments and as always thank you so very much for watching um hope you're all still keeping well and safe um wherever you are in the world and I will speak to you all again very soon Bye-bye.